Good morning. This is Friday, March 24th. And I'd like to begin by wishing uh, Nene Bennett a happy birthday. And I hope you have a great day, Nene. We so appreciate and love you and Nate. We're so happy you're part of our fellowship here at Wyndham. So you have a great day and know that we're praying for you. I'd also like to wish my granddaughter, uh, Cameron Elise Lacombe, or, or Camster, as we call her. Cammie, we want to wish you a happy birthday, honey. And uh, You're 22, I believe, and Papa wants you to know that, that me and Grammy love you very much. It was so nice being with you a couple months ago for your brother's wedding, and Grammy so appreciated the time she spent with you when she came out to see little uh, Amelia. Thank you. I was watching your grandmother. She, she threw me off. Little Amelia. So happy birthday, Cammie. And I uh, hope you have a great day, honey. And uh, Grammy sent you something. I hope you got it. We love you. And uh, see you soon, I hope. Maybe this summer. Today's devotion is decreasing for his purpose. He must increase, but I must decrease. That's John 3. If you become a necessity in someone else's life, you are out of God's will. As a servant, your primary responsibility is to be a friend of the bridegroom. That's John 3. When you see a person who is close to grasping the claims of Jesus Christ, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, come unto me, and I will give you rest. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. When they're coming close to that moment, you know that your influence has been used in the right direction. And when you begin to see that person in the middle of a difficult or painful struggle, as they approach that moment, don't try to prevent it, but pray that that difficulty will grow maybe ten times stronger until there's no power that, has, that can reach them on heaven or earth except for Christ. Over and over again, we may try to be amateur providences in somebody else's life. We are indeed amateurs coming in and actually preventing God's will and saying this person should not have to suffer that experience. Instead of being friends of the bridegroom, our sympathy gets in the way. One day that person may say unto us, you were a thief. You stole my desire to follow Jesus, and because of you, I lost sight of him. Because we intervene, like being a, div a little miniature divine providence. Beware of rejoicing with someone over the wrong thing, but always look to rejoice over the right thing. The friend of the bridegroom rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. He must increase, and I must decrease. This was spoken with joy, not with sadness. At least they were to see the bridegroom. And John, John said this was his joy. It represents a stepping aside, an absolute removal of the servants so they can see Jesus. You've been used by God to lead them to that moment. Now you get out of the way. I get out of the way and let them see Jesus. Listen intently with your inner entire being until you hear the bridegroom's voice in the life of another person. And never give any thought to what that devastation or difficulty or sickness within that person's life might bring. Just rejoice with godly excitement that his voice has been heard by them. You may often have to watch Jesus Christ wreck a life before he can save it. And that's Matthew 10. The challenge I have for us today is, are we disobedient to God, to his spirit as he speaks to us? To stand and watch as, as we have led perhaps someone close to Jesus and he's working with them, bringing them to that moment of, of salvation. Are we, are we obedient enough to stand and just get out of the way and let God do what he's got to do? Let's pray. Father, I pray that we could uh, indeed be these types of men and women in the lives of those we would lead to you. That as they reach that moment, we would step out of the way so they could see Jesus. And Lord, whatever that moment is made up of. Easy or tough, we would not stick our nose in where it doesn't belong, but trust you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for giving us these wonderful responsibilities. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow.